Hello everyone. Welcome to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at Ilove Pathology. The topic today uh, which I am covering is skin cancer. Skin cancer particularly the non-melanocytic skin cancer. This is the part 1 of uh, non-melanocytic skin cancers. In this part I will be discussing in detail about the anatomy and histology of skin relevant for uh, you know, understanding the skin cancer and uh, very uh, detailed etiopathogenesis of skin cancer and quickly we will conclude with uh, you know, understanding the different types of skin cancer. I am sure all of you are aware of uh, the normal histology of skin, right? So the skin contains the epidermis and the dermis and then you know that you know, you know, that, you know the epidermis has the extensions into the dermis as adnexal structures which can go into the deeper dermis. What is important to note that the epidermis do not contain blood vessels, lymphatics or the nerve. Histologically, epidermis is composed of five layers. It is separate from the dermis by a good basement membrane and the lowermost part of the epidermis is the basal layer which is a cuboidal or short cuboidal cells. These cells of basal layer are basically like a stem cells. These are the most mitotically active cells in the epidermis. These are the ones which differentiates into the cells of upper part of the epidermis which includes spinous or prickle cell layer. It's also called as stratum spinosum. Each of these cells of stratum spinosum are adhered to one another by means of desmosome. This desmosome histologically shows interdigitating processes or the spinous processes and that's the reason why this layer is called as stratum spinosum. The third important layer is the granular layer which contains variable sized keratohyaline granules. And the last one is the keratin layer which includes stratum corneum and stratum lucidum. This typically has a basket view type of keratin. So these are the epithelial component of the epidermis. Now there are, you, can, you, can, you can see in this illustration that there are two other cells which are non-epithelial and these are the melanocytes and the Langerhans cells. What are these melanocytes? These melanocytes are pigment producing cells. These are structurally they are dendritic cells you know they are interdigitating cells which the dendrites you know they can go into these epidermal cells, stratum spinosum cells. You can also note that there are not many melanocytes in the basal layer, right? So melanocytes are often found, are always found in the basal layer and for every six basal cells you find one melanocyte. And also important to note that these melanocytes, you know, these melanocytes through these interdigitating processes they cater to around roughly around 36 epidermal cells. We will talk about this a bit later. The another, uh, another important non-epithelial cell is the Langerhans cells. Okay, So these Langerhans cells are basically the antigen presenting cells. So this is the cell which first reacts whenever the skin is exposed to any extraneous agents. So they present the antigen to the immune system of our body. And that's how the immune system starts fighting against these invading agents. So these are Langer hand cells. Just don't get confused with another uh, cell called Lang hand cells. So Lang hand cells is a type of giant cell which you find in tuberculosis. So this is Langer hand cell which is an antigen presenting cell present in the epidermis. So basically epidermis consists of epithelial cells and non-epithelial cells and non-epithelial cells predominantly they are melanocytes okay of course there are Langerhans cells but predominantly they are melanocytes the function of epithelial cell is to produce a complex mixture of proteins and that is called keratin so basically the function of epithelial cells along with these keratin is structural in nature they have structural and protective functions you know they maintain the structural integrity of the epidermis sometimes they can be regulatory in function as well now coming to the non-epithelial cells that's melanocytes these are the ones which produces a brown black, black pigment called melanin now irrespective of the race irrespective of the country of origin each one of us every human being have the same number of melanocytes 
okay that means for every 6 basal cells you have roughly around one melanocyte so the color differences among each one of us is basically because the amount of pigment produced by these melanin that's why some are fair some are black some are brown so all sorts of color is because of this melanin so i also told you right each melanin each melanocyte caters to around roughly around 36 square mass epithelial cells right so all these collectively that means you know a melanocyte melanocyte the around 36 uh, epidermal cells along with one langerhans cell is referred to as one epidermal melanocyte unit now what is the function of melanin melanin is melanin shields the nuclei melanin you know the melanin produced by these melanocytes through the help of these interdigitating processes they reach into the cytoplasm of the adjacent cells okay now what does that do the melanin sorts of protects the nuclei it sort of shields the nuclei from damage so basically all we have to know that melanin is our natural sunscreen so the protection is from the damage by the ultraviolet rays ultraviolet light in the sunlight so we all know right we all we all talk about uh, spf when we talk when we use sunscreens right what is this spf spf means sun protection factor right we know that we have spf 10 20 and 30 so this melanin in our body in our skin is roughly around spf spf of 4 so basically melanin is good for our body so it protects the epidermis so that means to say that the function of skin is mainly barrier in nature so this is a beautiful image showing these intercellular bridges in stratum spinosum now let's talk about a bit about cancer we all know that the cancer is a genetic disorder caused by mutations in dna and these mutations can be induced or it can be spontaneous induced when i say induced it means it could be because of exposure to mutagens spontaneous is always as part of aging now coming to skin cancers we have lots of risk factors for the development of skin cancer let us understand each one of these the most important risk factor for the occurrence of skin cancer is chronic sun exposure so this chronic sun exposure over a period of many many years it could be even in decades right so chronic sun exposure basically means prolonged exposure to ultraviolet radiation what is ultraviolet radiation there are two types of uv rays one is uva another is uvb uva as the longer wavelength whereas ultraviolet b rays have shorter wavelength okay now remember a for aging ultraviolet a is responsible for aging and ultraviolet b is the one which is responsible for burning okay all this tanning and everything which happens because of ultraviolet b b for burning uvb results in burning whereas uva is the one which is responsible for the normal aging okay whatever whether it is ultraviolet a or ultraviolet b both can cause dna damage and mutation the second important risk factor for the occurrence of skin cancers are chronic immunosuppression which can be because of chemotherapy which can be because of transplantations various organ transplantations and of course yes sun exposure can also be one of the reason for chronic immunosuppression how does that happen that's because of uv rays now what does uv rays do uv rays not only damage the skin it also damages these antigen presenting cells what are those cells we talked about langerhans cells right so langerhans cells are also damaged langerhans cells are also you know suppressed by these ultraviolet rays and once the langerhans cells are suppressed that means to say that the antigen presenting cells do not function its normal function of presenting the antigen to the immune system so that means to say that we individuals will be more prone to the development of infections right so there will be increased susceptibility to infections particularly by the oncogenic viruses what are oncogenic viruses the viruses which causes cancer right Now the third important ones being it can be exposure to the tars oils which acts as chemical carcinogens or it could be chronic non healing ulcers or even old burn scars and this old burn scar is also referred to as marjolin ulcer few other important risk factor include 
ingestion of arsenic chronic ingestion of arsenic as well as ionizing radiation so all these collectively you know all these are the important risk factors for the development of skin cancer note the most important one being chronic sun exposure now another important risk factor we need to understand is this xeroderma pigmentosum what is this this is a genetic disorder which has inherited mutation in dna repair genes now what is the function of normal dna repair gene whenever the cell is exposed to any sort of radiation you know if the dna is damaged these dna repair genes come for help okay so they help in repair of the damaged dna so what happens whenever these genes only are damaged that means the dna damage which occurs you know they will not be repaired and then the damage accumulates causing mutation this is how a case of xeroderma pigmentosum pigmentosum looks like you know these individuals will have lots of you know pigmented lesions all over the body freckles all over the body and they are very highly sensitive for sun exposure they can develop immediate burns as soon as they are exposed to sun so that's the reason why these individuals should be always protected from exposure to sun particularly these ultraviolet rays so this is one of the important risk factor for the development of skin cancer so that's the reason why these individuals as i told you they have increased susceptibility to skin cancers now what are the different types of skin cancer one is basal cell carcinoma this is the most common type second one is squamous cell carcinoma the third one is malignant melanoma okay you don't have to use the word malignant it's melanoma now basal cell carcinoma is the most common type of skin cancer and they are locally aggressive skin cancers whereas squamous cell carcinoma is the second most common of course these two also are aggressive whereas melanoma is the most lethal form of skin cancers so these two skin cancers basal cell carcinoma and squamous cell carcinoma they are the ones which constitute non melanocytic skin cancers now let's talk a bit more about uh, dna damage and mutation so we need to know that two important types of genes are involved in skin cancer one tumor suppressor gene mutations and two as we already saw dna repair gene mutations what are the tumor suppressor genes involved two important genes tp53 earlier called p53 gene okay tp53 gene mutation and second one is ptch that's called patched gene tp53 gene mutations are implicated in the development of squamous cell carcinoma and basal cell carcinoma ptch gene is implicated mutation of this gene is implicated in the development of basal cell carcinomas and mutations of dna repair genes are implicated in both these cancers squamous cell carcinoma and basal cell carcinoma okay note that only ptch or patched gene is not involved in the occurrence of squamous cell carcinomas it's only purely basal cell carcinomas so basal cell carcinomas can occur either because of t53 mutation or because of ptch or because of dna repair gene mutations whereas squamous cell carcinomas occurs occurs only due to mutations in either tp53 or dna repair gene right so that's uh, all about the part 1 of uh, non melanocytic skin cancers we talked about anatomy and histology we talked in detail about etiopathogenesis and you know a bit about types of uh, skin cancers in the next part i'll be discussing in detail about the basal cell carcinoma the pre malignant lesions of skin and squamous cell carcinoma so stay tuned if you have liked this video please hit the like button do comment don't forget to subscribe because you'll be updated with all my videos and please do share if you find this video useful thank you